What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. My name is Darian. I really love filming cleaning organization videos, lifestyle, and mommy videos. As you can tell by the title of this video, 10 things I've learned in my five years of marriage and how we were successful in this five-year marriage so far. So it will be five years in June. We got married in 2015. Um, so it's coming up so I asked I just rounded it up so number one be honest but sweet in your delivery so what I mean by that is if you really got something that's pretty hard for you to really talk about with your significant other you scared you may offend him or her or whatever the case may be if you know what kind of love language they have then you will know how to best communicate with them but if you don't know what i mean by love languages there's a book that's out there it's called the five love languages and you learn about your own love language but your spouse or your significant other can read it or listen to it because they have an audiobook version and they can learn about their love language and it'll help you best communicate with each other and understand each other on a deeper level so if you don't know what that is in, an, in layman's term, love language is like, how do they best communicate and how will they best receive what it is that you got to say? So I know what my love language is. I'm more so of a quality time person. I love spending time with my husband and just sharing space. And you, one is really supposed to resonate out of all of them, but you can have you can have bits and pieces of every love language, but one should be your, ma your major one. And I feel like the second runner up for me in that situation, besides quality time is acts of service. So little things like cleaning the kitchen or something like that will make me happy and make my day. So being honest and being sweet in your delivery. So it's like, if you got something bad to say, don't just be like, ooh, I hate this about you or I don't like this about what you did. Just be like gentle. And if you're ready to argue, that's not the best time to have that conversation. Just, hey, I really want to talk to you about something. Oopty woo, it made me feel this way. Don't but don't put it as like you this and you that because it's like you're not taking ownership in whatever it is because I I believe that there's a reaction to everything so he or she could be reacting to something you did and you might not know what you did so just be sweet in your delivery to initiate that conversation that's number one number two being understanding so why he chooses his friends why he chooses hobby why he you know why he have certain likes or dislikes and i'm saying he because this is relating to me but if your significant other is of the same sex then you can you know interchange it the way you would like to fit your relationship but this is my personal relationship advice um so what i mean by that is like you can't choose their friends just like he can't choose your friends being understanding is just like don't judge like let this person be who they are and just sit back and do you mind your business like just understand like the things they may like may you may not like but it helps them be the person they are if that makes sense number three know that all the things you may voice that bugs you know how like you're saying it so that kind of goes with number one um being honest and sweet in your delivery this is its own number because for example i don't like when my husband puts his dirty clothes on the floor instead of in a dirty clothes hamper for example or since i like to walk around the house in my my t-shirt and my panties he like leave the um patio blinds open i hate that but so those are little things that irk me. But best believe every little thing that you say irk you, there's probably like 10 things that irk him. And he's just not going to tell you because it's probably not worth it. You're a little bit more sensitive or it may start an argument. So just being mindful, like, are you nagging? Is this something that you really need to talk about? Or can you just let it slide? You know what I'm saying? So just know, choose your battles, basically. Number four have fun take chances um so i'm not promoting drug use you, you know whatever floats your boat floats your boat what i mean is like travel 
I'm not one to have, like when I was little, I wanted a motorcycle, but I was never like really up for it. My husband actually has a motorcycle. I have my own helmet and I take a chance and I get on it with him and we go on a thrill ride. Like just doing things that you won't normally do and you, you know, just take a chance, you know? So that's, I also like to put it in a nutshell, like keeping it fresh. Number five, keep yourself up, keep it right. So what I mean by that, like if, for example, I had the baby two years ago, I definitely am now 10 pounds heavier than I was before I had him. So, and I feel, I could feel the 10 pound difference. How I know, I'm not one to really go shopping like that. And all the clothes that I've had, my like staples, my jeans, whatever, they're a little tight. So what I mean is like, don't lose yourself in the identity of being a mother if you are a mom. And that's in my situation. I'm a mom. I gained a little weight. I tend to the baby. He's a lot, you know, he's a toddler. So it's like you tend to lose yourself in becoming this in this new role. But it's like your relationship still got to be fresh. It still got to be right. And if he fell in love with this, you know, voluptuous, I'm not saying like he's not going to love me any less because I gained weight, but like it should also help you feel good about yourself, like keeping yourself together. So I go to the gym now. I, that's like a new thing I picked up because I'm not feeling too happy about my physical um, attributes right now. So I go to the gym. Because I do have my mommy belly and I'm not ashamed of having stretch marks, but I know that I could go and tone up. And just when you go out, get a little dressed up sometime or like, you know, a lot of times we go to the movies I have on Uggs or something. That's cool. But sometimes it is nice to get dressed up and get cute and go somewhere. So that's what I mean by that. Keep it sexy. All right. Number six, make goals together have and encourage one another so we have a goal to buy a house and that's a long story that happened with this last situation with us but we have a goal to be homeowners and not only get into our first home but we want to own multiple properties so how can we do that we got to set a goal and be and it has to be realistic and we have to be on the same page so that's something that we want to do so it's like coming up with a goal that's gonna you know further your family and your line is only going to make it better for you in the long run and your children if you plan to hand something down to your children I don't want my son to be in debt like I am with, in regards to my school so we already have a savings happening for his college fund we already have a savings for our house that it, I mean it may not be as much as we want it to be but we, we made that goal and we're sticking to it that's the whole purpose like you hold each other accountable you are a team you are a unit that's what you said when you said I do you became one number seven give each other space if he doesn't want to talk, don't force the conversation. So, like, my husband is a type of person, he won't talk. He doesn't talk much anyway. But I like to talk, and I like to find a solution, and I want to come up with an agreement or whatever, if we're going to agree to disagree, whatever the case may be. But I know him so much that if he if he don't want to talk, this conversation is not going to be a healthy, productive conversation. I'm not going to get out of him what I want to get out of him. I'm not going to hear what I want to hear. It's going to make me mad and we're going to be mad at each other and it's going to be a whole new argument. So like just know each other, know each other's limits, give each other space when they need that space because every conversation don't have to be had when you feel like it needs to be had. Sit on it, think how you're going to deliver it and let that be that. Number eight, don't hold grudges. So it's things that we do to each other that probably irk the mess out of each other, like I said. And if it really pissed me off and we tried to work past it, if you say you forgave him, don't be bringing it up in the next argument because that goes to show you really did not forgive him. So don't hold grudges. If it's something that you really can't get past, y'all need to talk about it. But if you say, oh, I forgive you, it's, you know, be good and you really act like you good. And then when he make you mad again, you holding it against him, that's not healthy. So holding a grudge is not going to get you nowhere. So you need to like either let it go and just let that be or you need to work through it. So number nine, 
be present try not to bring work home or work problems home so i am working in my career i have a very difficult job and what i was doing before i changed jobs was difficult as well and i would find myself confiding in him about things that bother me either with my supervisor or the clients that i work with it's like he may be a good confidant but i you don't want to start bringing all that mess home and then it's like you spending your quality time with your your significant other talking about things that is not even relevant to your relationship so try to keep that work-life balance healthy and separate as possible because it's so easy to be enmeshed with all the things that you got to go through at work and bring it home it's just too much so like being mindful of the things you talk about i don't even talk about work like that with him anymore i talk about what our goals are what we trying to do what's our next little you know whatever but just being mindful not to bring that work home if it don't need to be brought home yes sometimes if you really went through it that day but not every day have a work friend to discuss that kind of stuff with and finally number 10 learn a new trade together or an engage in a new hobby so that kind of goes with number six is like make goals together but this one i'm what i mean is yes we set goals to like own a house or something but like learning a new trade is also another way where you can build new memories i really want to go to a pottery class you know and that's something he would be interested in too and i'm a hands-on person i'm crafty and that's therapeutic for me and so is he so it's like if we can go to a pottery class or a paint and sip create our own paint and sip and send a baby with his grandparents that's gonna be you know fun like do things that you don't usually do so you can build those memories together and you could talk about them later on you could tell your kids about this funny crazy thing y'all tried together when you were younger and when you were in your 20s and your prime or whatever i think keeping it fresh and keeping it exciting and keeping it interesting throughout your marriage will help your your marriage flow better you will find that time you know time passes you and you are not like oh my god i just realized we're about to be married for five years because a lot has changed and we're like yes we got married young but it's it don't feel like it's been that long and if you haven't followed our journey based on what we shared so far we've been married since 2015 but we've been together since 2009 in 11 year relationship so it's been a fun and interesting journey i love him to death i love our son and for those that have watched another video that i posted a few months ago we're actually going to start making reasonable efforts we're not being super careful but we're not actively like oh i'm tracking my ovulation date if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel don't forget to subscribe to the nicarians down below in the description box and stay tuned for more videos from me and from me and hubby on that channel and if you love clean with me videos mommy lifestyle videos hope you join me on this journey and I will see you.